This is Metal Dan with Rapture Radio and WCNI in New London, Connecticut. On the line via Zoom, I've been stoked to talk to this guy for a long time, man. Former lead singer of Exodus, cur- currently with Generation Kill. I'm talking about Rob Dukes. Rob, what's going on, man? Thanks a lot. What's up, buddy? How are you, man? Uh, great, man. Can't complain. The weather kind of sucks here in Connecticut, but... You know, what are you going to do? I'm in Phoenix sitting outside, and uh, I got a hoodie on because it's a little windy out, but uh, blue skies, and I'm uh, sitting outside smoking a cigar and drinking coffee. There you go. (laughs) My mom lives in Tucson, man. I hear all about it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Hey, man, let's talk about this record, man. This is why we got you on. You know, MK Ultra, name of the record, out now on uh, Blood Blast Records. Man, the last record came out in 2013, man, nine years. Yeah. You know, that's an eternity in the in the music business, man. What what took so long? Um, well, you know, uh, at first, you know, we did the whole cycle of uh that that record cycled until about 2015. Right. And then uh so then we worked on uh I got a call from uh Daryl from Run DMC said he wanted to write some music together. So I worked on that with him. And yeah. uh, and then once that was done, we started working on the record. We got about uh, halfway in the record and then um, uh, got rid of the bass player. So we threw out all the songs that uh, that we had and started over. And probably early, late 2017, early 2018, we started writing. And the first song we wrote was Never Relent. Nice. Uh, got Gary to, to do a solo on it you know what yep. I mean and then, yeah uh, and then just started working on the songs and you know we, you know uh COVID happened so that that was a big uh you know stepping stone to get through but that wasn't the only reason it was you know there were a lot of reasons we you know we didn't want to rush it we were doing it on we we don't have a we we didn't have uh anybody giving us a deadline so we were um doing it on our own time we were doing it on our own time and we didn't have to uh answer to anybody so we would uh i mean we would do a few of the songs we we wrote them finished them recorded them and then sat with them for a couple weeks and went nah we can do better and we either threw it away and started over or we rewrote it or one song we we uh we um we just we we took the composition and changed it around and made the verse, the chorus and the chorus of verses. And we kept kind of doing that. And we kept, uh, until the, the album was different, um, vocally, this is the most challenging thing I've ever done. Um, and, um, I took, it, I think uh, never relent took like five sessions to do it because I, I'd pushed myself to the limit of my abilities, but I, I didn't want to lose my voice or fuck my voice up. So I was, uh, I was pushing myself so hard. I would have to get to a certain point and go, Oh, you know what? Let me come back uh, day after tomorrow and I'll, I'll finish it. And, uh, and that's what we did that that way. And then uh, opiate was the same way opiate. Um, I don't know if people can hear it when you hear the song, but uh, the mellow parts I did on like a, a day or two. And yeah. then, um, and then, uh, but the heavier parts as the screamy parts during the, those buildups, man, um, those took like four or five sessions because I kept, uh, I, I, I screamed as loud as I could. I, I, I was screaming so loud. I was, I was like making myself dizzy, you know, um, <laughs> giving myself, giving myself headaches from screaming for, you know, an hour straight trying to get in. And I kept, you know, I had an idea in my head, but then I had to get there. And yeah. so just because you have the idea in your head, doesn't mean you could just pull it off the first time. So I kept doing it over and over and over again until I got it. And then once I got it, I was like, okay, now I got to perfect it. So, I mean, we're, we're, you know, and it was just the whole record was like that. I mean, uh, Le Fin du Monde was the same way. Uh, those choruses were so big and so um, just, uh, just at the, at the, you know, and I, I used my, the full range of my voice and on this record from, from the low to the mellow to the high. And I just kept uh, trying things. So, you know, that being said, it took a little longer to do, but uh I think the trade-off at the end was it, it came out, um, it, it exceeded my own expectations. And I think it raised the bar from our last record, which yeah. was basically all I wanted to do. I wanted to say, 
we got to make a record that's better than the last one. So that's what we did. And uh, I think we pulled it off, you know. Yeah, it's a great record, man. Absolutely amazing. You know, the thing that I like about records, especially uh, this record, to me, there isn't a throwaway track on here. All the way to from the beginning of the record, which is Never Relent, you know, obviously with Gary doing a, you know, playing guitar on, on that track, all the way to the last two songs, you know, Life of Sin and, you know, La Fin du Monde. And, uh, you know, I like records that just take you on a journey, man. Um, you know, I had to look up what La Fin du Monde means, but can you <laughs> tell our listeners what it means, man? It's, it means the end of the world, man. Yeah. It means it's over. It's done. And, uh, you know, I had my friend Ronnie King come on uh, and play keyboards and do all those spooky shit in between. And he added all the, the, uh, the, the keyboard stuff to it. He's, He's like a Grammy award winning keyboard play played with Tupac and Snoop and Rancid. And he's just a brilliant guy. And uh, he's a really good friend. I've been friends with him a really long time. So I said, Hey man, can you add something to this? And when he did it, I was like, Holy shit. I had to go rewrite the lyrics because he, it changed the whole song. <laughs> it changed the whole feel of the song. I'm like, Oh fuck. So um, anyway, uh, that was uh, in that last note of the record that fucking that last fucking note, that D minor is just, boom, it was just yeah. perfect. And I was like, yeah, man. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, this isn't a happy record, man. I mean, the, the name of the band is obviously Generation Kill. Uh, yeah. But I mean, the subject matter, man, you know, like La Fin de Monde, End of the World, Life of Sin. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a crazy song about a, a, a woman who's, going through and killing dudes. I mean, where do you find the inspiration? I got, I guess it's inspiration yeah. for, for your yeah. lyrics, man. Um, well, uh, Life of Sin was, um, so uh, have you ever heard of the, you ever seen the show Mindhunters? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that, that a, that's a book and that's actually a true story. So uh, that guy wrote a book about how he, um, you know, became the first guy to chase serial killers and uh women are a very rare breed of serial killers only been one or two um uh and i wanted to write a song i wrote like a short story about a like a like a hot one uh, at first she was like a vampire but um that it, it, it i wanted it to be in reality so um you know uh so you know that's where the the inspiration come from there's very rare serial killers and if there was a, a serial killer that was a woman I wanted her to be super fucking hot and uh, just be able to, you know, lure anyone out of a bar and rip their fucking throat out and do horrible things to them. So that was where that came from. That's just, that's just where my head went. And uh, I can't explain it. It's just the way I way it happened. Yeah. Cool. You know, you got some uh, collaborations on here, obviously Gary from Exodus, you got Chris Poland, from Megadeth, you got uh, John Joseph from Crow Mags. How did yeah. all those, you know, how did all those come about, man? Um, well, I just called him and asked him, "Hey, man, you want?" So I, I called uh, my guitar player and I wrote uh, "Dogs of War" with every intention of having John on it. We finished the song before we even asked him. I okay. didn't want him to. I didn't want him to. To. Uh, I didn't want to say, "Hey, man, we're, we got this song. Uh, we want you to sing on." Well, you know, well, let me hear it. And I was like, uh, well, we didn't record it yet. So, <laughs> I, I, we, well, so what we did was we finished the whole song and then um, uh, I sent him the lyrics and the music. And, you know, most people like I get asked to sing on stuff all the time and you really have to be careful because what if you say yes, but then the song's fucking terrible. Yeah, you know right. what I mean, so, um, so John, uh, he, he did what I would do. He would I'll go, you know, let me hear the song first and then I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll hit you up. And if you don't want to be a part of it, you just kind of like you either, you know, either, Hey man, I don't have the time or whatever, you know, whatever fucking lame excuse you're going to give. But, uh, John called me in five minutes and said, dude, I'm in. I was yeah. like, all right, dude, I book, I'll book studio time right now and I'll send you. And I picked him up and went to the studio and, and he did it. Um, and it was awesome, man. So, and Chris Paul and I just, I, same thing, man. I sent them the track. I was like, Hey man, um, you know, you're one of my favorite guitar players of all time. You have a, a distinct tone. 
and we're doing this song. Um, I wrote it about the telltale heart. Um, but I, um, I had the audacity to, uh, to, uh, finish, um, uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe's story and add a, a, another dimension to it. Um, cause now the guy's in jail and Edgar Allan Poe never did that. He just, the story ends at the police showing up at the door. <laughs> and, um, I had the audacity to fucking add another uh, uh, another part of the story to it, um, so I did it for the song, and then I sent it to Chris, and and he fucking loved it. So uh, I didn't tell him anything, man. I said, "You do whatever you want to do," and uh, and that's what he sent back. What he sent back was what is what we heard for the first time. We're like, "Done, yeah, fucking don't even have to," and that was it. So it was uh, that was beautiful. And Gary, yeah. the same thing. I I sent Gary the song, and he was like, "Oh, I don't know, man." And then I sent the song, and he go, "All right, cool." So same way, booked studio time, and he went and did it and, and killed it. So, yeah. Nice, man. Uh, you know, obviously there's some differences between Generation Kill and Exodus. Uh, you know, you have a song like Never Relent, which has Gary playing on it. So that, to me, is the closest thing to, like, an Exodus-type song on this record. But... What do you see as the difference between Generation Kill and Exodus? Like, to me, obviously, they're both aggressive. They're both angry. But Generation Kill, to me, has a little bit more melody to it. Um, yeah. it am I close to what you're thinking? Or sure. Well, there's a little more room for to do whatever we want. So we can do ballads. And we can do slower stuff and we can you know we can experiment and and you know like on uh, we're all gonna die we did carney and uh i remember people every, a lot of i mean i don't read comments anymore but my band does and they were like dude everyone hates carney and i'm like why and they're like they just <laughs> fucking they hate it and i'm like but i gotta you know i sent it to rob zombie and he sent me back he goes dude this song's the best man fuck man and i'm like oh great cool so you know everybody's got their own fucking opinion and and uh so we, we never cared what anyone thought. We're just going to do what we do. And we really write songs that we want to hear. That's kind of the deal is, you know, you got to go up and play them. I mean, how fucking shitty would it be to, to write a song that you, you write because you're stuck in this box and you've got to write this way and it can't, you can't go anywhere. And then you, you just, you start to repeat yourself. And I, I don't, I don't think this band uh, has to do that. I think we can do whatever we want. If we wanted to write a piano song, we could. And uh, so, you know, my favorite bands, you know, Pink Floyd and Queen and, um, you know, bands of that. Like, so, you know, they they do what they want and they don't they don't give a fuck what anyone says. Or <laughs> so, and I, you know, with a band like Generation Kill, there, you know, we are always going to be heavy because that's what we do and what we like. But we're also, you know, we're smart enough to go, you know, um, let's add some other elements of music to, to our stuff. So that's what we did. You know? Cool. Right on, man. Hey, uh, tours, man, or, or shows. Uh, do, do you have any plans to uh, take it out on the road or what are you thinking? Well, we're booking for 2023 now because 2022 is filled because it's, it's the backlog of the last two years. So, right. Right. Um, right. But we're hoping that maybe we can go do something. We might do some one-offs or something here and there. But for the most part, I think we're going to be, uh, you know, we're going to, we'll see as it goes, man. We'll, we'll take it as it comes. We'll try to get some shit, try to get some stuff. Uh, but, but everything's full, man. I mean, it's fucking crazy how, uh, how crazy the world is, you know? Yeah. Uh, do, what do you have to do? All right. Let's say you do a tour, you know, what do you have to do differently that, you know, you were doing before, you know, before COVID? Um, I think you just, I don't know, man. I, I don't have an answer for that. I, I just, yeah. I, I think, uh, I think you just, look, man, I, I want everybody to be safe. You know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I, I wish I could say, well, you know, if you go out and get vaccinated, but, Man, I don't know, man. People that, that aren't vaccinated, you know, if you're healthy enough, you seem to be fine. But that being said, you know, you can be healthy, but your mom might not be. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't seen my, my dad in years because 
my dad had a lung transplant, so I haven't been able to go see him because I don't want to, God forbid, I, I get him sick. That would, you know, that would destroy me. So, yeah. you know, but that, that being said, it just, uh, you know, I wish to, I, I wish I was optimistic and say, Oh, it's all going to be great. But I, I don't, I don't have that. I'm a pessimist. So I, I think it's probably, I think it's probably going to get worse. You know, I think the next one's going to be worse. Yeah. So. Do, you, do you think it'll ever go back to normal? You know, to where we, we can just show up and, and not worry about this shit. Uh, I hope so, man. I mean, I really do. I, I don't, I, I'm not a, I'm not a doomsayer, but I, I kind of am at the same time. Um, I don't know. I, I can't answer that question. I wish I could. Um, I wish uh, that it would all go back to normal, but I think it's like 9-11. The world is forever changed. You know, I think, I think they handled this wrong from the beginning. Um, and because of that, they sowed the lines of dissent and they sowed the lines of doubt. And um, that will forever be attached to this stupid fucking thing that happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I think it was um, ignorance and stupidity and it's led to division among uh, the human race. And uh, I don't know if we'll recover. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's a de depressing way to, to finish this up, man. But, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but you know what, dude, on, on a bright note, the new South park season is fucking killer, man. It's so good. So you know what, go home, smoke weed, watch South park and, and just roll with it, man. Maybe yeah. the, hopefully, hopefully the meteor will get here soon enough and we won't have to worry about it. We'll give the dinosaurs another chance, you know? Hey. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Rob Dukes, man. Uh, vocalist for Generation Kill. The record is called MK Ultra. It's awesome. We spin it all the time on uh, Rapture Radio and WCNI in New London, Connecticut. It's awesome, man. Rob, thank you so much for taking time out of your day, man. We appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. And uh, thank you. And I'll, I'll talk to you again. Absolutely, man. Peace. Be good, man. Yeah. You too, bud. Bye. All right.